Um, firstly, I'd just like to thank uh, Cardi Kirky um, for the support they're giving Cork GAA, um, and I suppose um, in terms of coaching, in terms of facilities, and also in terms of high performance as well. Um, I'd like to thank them for my own position, most importantly. Every morning when I'm eating breakfast, I thank them for my half a bowl of porridge, <laughs> my half an egg. So, thank you very much. Um, when, the, when, when the position, uh, on the 4th of June, when the position was advertised, it really jumped off the page uh, for me. Uh, both as a corkman um, and also coming from a high performance background that I've, that I've been with the RFU for the last 18 years. And I'm just, I had my eye for the last couple of years on Cork, what's happening here. I've been impressed by the vision, the vision of the county board. I've been impressed by what Cork and Cork Key have been doing. And uh, very much when I saw that position coming up, coming up, it was something that really excited me. Um, and again, as a Valley Claw man, it's something that I wanted to become part of as well. And uh, I'm, really looking, I'm really looking forward, excited, and excited about the next couple of years. I'm moving my plans to action here. So, a lot of people are asking me, a lot of people ask me, what is my job? You know, Director of High Performance, High Performance Manager for Cork GAA. My daughter's asking me this, every single morning over breakfast in the first couple of weeks. It's the first time she saw me without a suit for nearly 18 years. So I'm going around this, she thought I was an imposter. I was going way off into my car on it and coming back, she was wondering what type of work I was doing, you know? So I suppose it's important to outline what I'm doing and what I'm doing for Cork and what I will give to Cork over the next three years. As High Performance Manager, my role is to collaborate with the managers, coaches, and service providers to create the optimal training environment whereby every player and team can prepare and perform to their full potential at all levels. Basically, what that is, is to surround, <coughs> sorry guys, is basically to surround the managers from the hurling <coughs> and the football from senior grade all the way down to Revelo with the best support services that I can come up with. The key role here, guys, will be building support teams, monitoring these support teams, and also developing these support teams. So what is the model I'm working from? There's three aspects that I want to create when I'm building the card player the car pair of the future. And it's a holistic model that I'm looking at. I'm looking at developing the player, the game, the body, and the mind. And there's three main pillars here. There's a technical and tactical pillar, there's the physical and medical pillar, and also there's a well-being and mindset pillar. And the components of this then would be the game analysis and training analysis. That's including video and GPS training management in, in terms of training load, strength and conditioning, injury prevention and injury management, that include strength and conditioning and the medical team under, under the auspice of, of, of Dr. Khan, and also nutrition, psychology, and lifestyle. They are the main areas, and these areas then will be brought forward and used at the adult level, senior level, youth level, down to minor and, and level O, and all the way down to uh, the childhood level here. I suppose if somebody was to ask me, what's the most important part of this job? What's the most important part of this job is developing players who can thrive under championship intensity. And that's the type of player we're trying to create. And how are we going to create that player? The number one driver of that <coughs> will be how the players train. And everything from game analysis all the way up to lifestyle feeds into how we train. And that's the most important thing. Every training session that Cork teams will undertake, there should be a palpable sense that they're training at championship intensity. We should be in no doubt by looking at a training session that they're training at or above championship intensity. And that's crucial. And that's what I will challenge 
the coaches, the management, and the sports staff around. And that's of, of number one importance. Secondly, from a physical and medical point of view, and the second important objective here is to produce players that are strong. By strong, I mean that they can break the tackle. Yes, being strong gym-wise is important, lads, but can you break the tackle? Can you move forward with the ball? But also, are they fit, agile, and robust enough to go at top intensity for 70 plus minutes. That's the second objective. And finally, the third objective, and this is really important, to develop players, to develop players that are coachable, but also develop players that make good choices when they're not under our auspice at training. So what do they do in the other, 20, the other 22 plus hours when they're outside of training? Do they make good choices to make themselves better players? Do they make good choices to make themselves better men? So basically my job is to create an environment whereby the management, the coaches and the players are fit for purpose. Fit to thrive in those game breaking moments in the heat of championship battle. And that's essentially what my job is in a nutshell. I go deeper into the other aspects of it now. So the first job, and, and I suppose what I've been doing for the first eight weeks, is getting to meet as many people as I can and start to build the team of teams, the support structures around every single team across hurling and football. The first area, and I suppose it's an area that I attacked and, and came a little bit easier for me coming from my own strength and conditioning background, was the strength and conditioning team. At the moment, that's there in place from senior level all the way down and through, all the way through to Rebel Oak. I suppose what this means as well, and the position means that there can be continuity with these positions. We suffered in the past with transient staff. Um, I believe there was four strength and conditioning coaches with the senior football team from the time I left in 2012 to 2016 so 2017. So important that we build continuity here. Sometimes it's not always possible to keep, keep the staff member there or the coach there. But what's really important is that we have a curriculum of best practice inbuilt and that that remains constant and that con constantly grows and progresses year on year. And that's crucial. The medical team, that's in place now, under Dr. Khan. This is one of, I suppose, the most pressurized areas, whether it be a professional sport or any high level sport. <coughs> whether, it's the, whether it's the doctor or the physios, they have to make big decisions, high pressurized decisions a lot, and it's very, very, a lot and often, and it's really important that we people like the caliber of Dr. Khan, with his experience making these decisions on behalf of these players here. Some of the changes to the medical team already have come regarding the, the senior physio group, um, both for the hurlers and for the footballers. Over the last few years, teams have become under uh, more pressure. Um, physios have become more pressured to deliver the needs that go into delivering the type of service that any high performance team needs. And the Cork Hurling football team are no different than that. So moving forward this year, the lead physios across hurling and football will be supported with, addition, with an additional staff member here. This will free the lead physio up to that very important area of return to play, to, to accelerate the return to play of any injured players. And that's crucial because we need our best players on the park at all times. The analysis team, and this is another area, this is another growth area as well. The players nowadays, I'm, they're digital natives, I'm a digital immigrant, that is my age and beyond. And it's really important that we embrace the digital age. Um, players learn, and coaches learn differently now, and they're coached differently. And a big part of that, and a big part moving forward, and it's trending across all sports, is the area of video analysis, 
and for example GPS as well. For the first time in Cork GEA this year, all the teams across hurling football will be serviced by one service provider in terms of video analysis and one sharing platform as well. And this is important. This is important for, for a couple of reasons. One, it means that there's a common language and common metrics that coaches can chat to each other about and learn. But also, we'll be, we'll be able to, for the first time, start building profiles of these players as well, moving forward, and longitudinal profiles as well. And this is really, really important in terms of optimizing these lads' development. We're also going to bring in um, a, a video analysis coordinator who will work with the team managers to ensure that best practice will be delivered in this area. It can be a tricky area. There can be paralysis by analysis. We need expertise in this area. And the video analysis coordinator will provide that with the coaches also. Nutrition team. We've been very lucky uh, last year. We've had Johnny Holland working with both the football and hurling group. His position next year will expand. And he'll also work with the underage groups as well. Again, teaching and coaching them on the fundamental principles of both nutrition for health, but also nutrition for performance. But a, a, a key area here, and something we'll start with the minor horrors on Thursday night as soon as that, we'll start uh, working with the parents. When you're trying to change habits, it's really important that there's buy-in at home because they can often be, the, they are the biggest driver of change in any household. So it's important that we coach not only the players, but also the parents. And that's starting as soon as this Thursday with a pre-season talk with the minor partners. And finally, the area of well-being and mindset. And this, this whole team. When I was last involved with Cork, and even now, one of, it's one of the most impressive areas that the team managers have built. It's my job now, moving forward, to look at what we're doing here, take the learnings from each team, making sure that the pockets of best practice are being delivered across all the teams as well. But it's a very, very strong area. It's something that I endeavor to build upon and to make sure that when some of these managers are moving on, that the practices that they've installed across all areas of sports psychology, from sports psychology to culture to um, formulating teamwork to lifestyle coaching all the way to mental health that all these areas that all these areas will continue to grow and move forward with the different teams it's one thing supporting the teams and that that can be the easy bit but we a part of my job and a big part of my job as well will be to to hold the teams and the managers and the coaches and the players accountable because that's what high performance is. On one side it's, it's high support but the other side it's high challenge, high challenge. Raising the bar, raising the standards because if you raise the bar and the standards people will meet those standards. Examples of this would be here in terms of how we train GPS when used properly, it's not high performance just because you have GPS, you have to use GPS properly. What that allows us to do moving forward is to ensure that we are training at or above championship level intensity, and that's crucial. That we're always training at or above championship base intensity. Physical testing. <coughs> For the first time again in car hurling and football, all teams across both sports will, will be undertaking a battery of tests similar for every team from senior all the way down to the rebel Oak. Why this is good and why this is important is that it creates a pathway of best practice, it creates benchmarks so that the younger players will know physically where do I need to get to to get to the next level. And that's really, really important. And for the first time next year, or for the first time coming into this pre-season, that will occur. Okay, finally, and developing the, uh, the support teams. So 
So it's important to, to create the support teams, to challenge them, but how do we develop these and make sure we're growing year on year? And there's three main ways, there's three main ways by which we will do this, through constant evaluation, through education, and through exploration as well. Looking outside for best practice and bringing that in. So firstly, and I've been chatting to a lot of the, the team managers on this already, is to, to drive the review habit, to make sure that after every term, the end of pre-season, the end of the league, in the championship, we do detailed reviewing on what has gone on, and detailed reviewing across all aspects of high performance, from strength and conditioning, to medical, to video analysis, to sports psychology, so we can learn and grow and move on. From an education point of view, multidisciplinary workshops and conferences will be laid out. And also in terms of education, in terms of, terms of education research and innovation. We've got fantastic institutes here for CIT and UCC, which can be an unbelievable source of help for Cork GA moving forward. And we will embrace our relationship with these institutes. Not only in terms of some of the lectures that they have, world class lectures in, in computer science, um, in health sciences, in physiotherapy, from the medical world, from the physical education world as well, but also it's really important that we use the students as well. And at the moment in the Red Below program, I showed the various different times around Cork on a Friday night. There's 10 students from CIT already being exposed to high quality coaching. Learning their trade, learning from their mistakes, gaining confidence in front of the kids. But this also serves another purpose for us at Cork, in that it also serves talent identification as well. Is that we can start <coughs> picking out the best young coaches and developing those to another level. And, and finally, of course, with these institutes is that we need to be at the cutting edge, and it's really important that we use them in terms of, of research and development. And finally, cross code and corporate alliances, really important, guys, that we look outside, outside the cave, that we look outside and start bringing best practice back in. Not only externally, but also internally. It's important that the hurling wing talks to the football wing, and the football wing talks to the hurling wing, in terms of best practice. Only last week, we had a meeting with the minor coaches from the Hurling of Football, Bobby Dono, to discuss dual players and how can we best serve these dual players. That took one hour of the meeting, the other two hours was a conversation between the two coaches about common problems and then coming up with common solutions when they're dealing with these teenagers. So this is something that I would embrace moving forward also. So that's my job. That's my job. I don't explain that to my daughter every morning. <laughs> Might be a bit long-winded. But it is to build the support teams, monitor these support teams, but also importantly, develop these support teams moving forward. Finally, I'd like to thank Corda Corpi, uh, for giving me the platform this evening, but I'd also like to uh, take, uh, take this opportunity as well to thank the, the various managers and coaches and staff members who welcomed me into my new job over the last uh, eight weeks. Um, transitions can always be a bit shaky, but it's, you've been unbelievably warm, you've been unbelievably giving, and you've allowed me to hit the ground running because it's really important that my plans look over the hill, but we need to hit the ground running and make sure that all the Cork teams across hurling and football have the best pre-season that they've done in a number of years to set them up for success later on this summer. So thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for listening. And I'm looking forward to the journey for the next few years. Thank you very much.